Welcome back to a new episode of Grow Not Float News Bites. I'm Evie Dross, owner and creative director of Evolutions Design. So if you haven't already, please be sure to like and subscribe if you like getting information on how to grow your brand and your business. So today we're going to be talking about why you need a branding guideline for your business. I know you all have, you know, scrolled through your social media and seen specific posts that you instantly recognize all because of, you know, the colors, the fonts or the imagery that was used. This is a great example of excellent branding. And I'm a firm believer that brand guidelines are essential for any company to create a cohesive identity, vision, and key values. So by maintaining consistency, you will be able to grow your business through brand recognition, making it easy for customers to identify you and to help you know stand out from your com competitors. Um, your comprehensive branding package will serve as a benchmark for all of your future projects. So everything is in the details. You want the branding guideline basically will be different for every company and will include all of the visual elements um, that you will use to create your marketing materials moving forward. So when you first create your strategy, stick to the basics um, and you can add additional content as your business grows. I mean, it takes time to build a successful business. So don't expect to do everything at once. So let's jump into one of um, our brand guidelines that's going to cover your logo, color palettes, typography, um, business card design, and email signatures. Okay, so now I'm going to review um, with you the basic branding elements that you would typically see. Um, right here, I have the brand guidelines that we created for Mia Costa Interiors. And so we're going to go through each page and break down those elements. So here you see the brand guidelines cover sheet. And again, this is for Mia Costa Interiors. Our next page is your logo suite. And so um, many, many times you may have more than one variation of a logo. And so they have two um, variations and a monogram. So here you see the main logo. This is the one you, you typically want to use um, for all instances. And then you have your long format uh, variation is um, better in spaces where it may not be tall enough to fit the main logo. And then you have your monogram. This is more so um, good for decorative applications. The next page goes into the brand colors. So you have your PMS, your CMYK, your RGB, and um, your hex. And I have a video um, that goes into a little bit more detail about all of those um, that I just mentioned, but they're useful for like when you're sending um, uh, marketing collateral jobs to the printer. These are, you know, the information that they will need. And so here you see you have your primary color, which is this really nice kind of charcoal gray. And then your secondary uh, color, which is kind of like a soft pink um, tone with all of the correct codes for each of um, the color versions. Next, you have your typography. And so the main uh, mark uses Montserrat and semi-bold. The um, secondary font that's being used, and that's um, for the text that reads interiors, is Oranium Bomb. And I don't know why they name these fonts these crazy names, but it is what it is. <laughs> And then the font that is used for the monogram is called Aurelia. And so we have all the fonts broken down here so they know exactly what the font name is um, with examples of the full alphabet and numbers um, so that they can see what it looks like for each. 
This here um, just kind of breaks down the different file types that we include in the logo package that we send the client. And it gives a description for each um, and where they may uh, need to use each different file type and what they're for. Okay, so the other elements that we talked about was business card. And so here's kind of a design concept um, that was put together that can show you how all of those elements come together using those fonts, the color scheme, and the logo. Nice and clean uh, concept that we have here. And then last but not least is an example of an email signature. So here you see we're using the Aurelia font um for sincere, sincerely mia costa and then directly underneath that we have the long format um logo with uh the phone number instagram handle and website uh link using um again the typography fonts that is part of this brand so this kind of gives you an idea of what a brand guideline sheet would look like and the importance of it and how it all can, you know, how it all comes together to streamline your brand. When you send out an email, post to social media, or write a, a blog article, you use the elements, you know, that we just went through to create all of your branding materials. By implementing these resources, um, you will avoid any inconsistency in your design content. So when your font, color palette, and logo are used in your branding for daily projects, you will create basically credibility and help make your brand easily recognizable. So when you send out an email, post to social media, or write a blog article, you use these elements that we just went over to create all of your branded materials. By implementing these um, resources, you will avoid any inconsistency in your design content. So when your font, color palette, and logo are used in your branding for daily projects, um, this will help you build credibility and help make your brand easily recognizable. So trust me, it'll make it much easier for you to get noticed when there are plenty of other businesses trying to get your you know, customer's attention. So as you know, consistent branding will basically save you time. You wanna pick out elements for a branding package You know, can take a large chunk of time up front. You'll need to browse you know, a wide variety of materials to find colors, fonts, and imagery that you know, you're really satisfied with. And it can take multiple tries to find the perfect combination. So from a long-term perspective, you'll be saving time um, by identifying your brand early on. Now, of course, um, when you work with a professional designer, they will be able to create the perfect combination based on your preferences. And they will also, you know, be able to give you suggestions to help, you know, creating branding guidelines that you can use for years to come. And the best part is that they will do all that hard work, you know, putting it together so you can focus on other parts of your business, business that, you know, are pertinent. So having brand guidelines basically help you build recognition. Um, when you maintain strict marketing expectations, it will strengthen your message and connection to the community and your customers. So anytime you do business, you will be easily um, recognized by the content you send out while keeping it professional. Um, it also gives your employees the tools to know what design elements are acceptable from start. And this saves them time and keeps consistent company standards. This will also make it easier to create long-term trust with your customers and other businesses you work with. And the end of the day, as I've always said, remember that consistency is one of the keys to credibility. Okay, so I hope this was useful for you and you understand the importance of having uh, branding guidelines 
and just how it is going to keep everything cohesive, streamlined, and make you easily recognizable. I mean, isn't that what you want? So tune in next week for a new episode and you guys have a great week.